Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. As we enter into this new year, we want to consider what our goals are for 2022. With the name of Jesus and with his word as our top priority, we will truly be blessed in this new year. This morning we'll be following the order of service called the Service of Word and Sacrament as it begins on page 26 in the front of the hymnal. We join now in our opening hymn of praise, hymn 76, Jesus' Name of Wondrous Love. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirits. You make us pure. 
Let us pray. Eternal Son of God, on this day you were called Jesus, a name that proclaims you to be the Savior of all people. Give us strength in the new year to live each day to the honor of your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson is recorded in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord tells Moses and Aaron to bless the Israelites by putting the name of the triune God on them. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. This is the word of the Lord. In place of the psalm of the day this morning, the choir will be singing, Jesus, Jesus, Light from Light. Our second lesson is recorded in Galatians chapter 3. Here Paul points out that God has not only put his name on us, he's also made us a part of his family of believers through faith in Jesus. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Alleluia.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 2. Here we see the eight-day-old Jesus being circumcised and given his name. And then we see the 12-year-old Jesus being about his father's business. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 71, The Old Year Now Has Passed Away.
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Our sermon text for the first Sunday in this new year is our gospel for today from Luke chapter 2. We hear again just select verses. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? This is God's word. Your friends in Christ, we have come to that time of year when people are talking once again about New Year's resolutions. So have you set any resolutions for yourself for 2022? Do you know where that tradition of making New Year's resolutions started? Well, it actually began over 4,000 years ago in ancient Babylon. An example of a resolution that they might make would be to promise to return that piece of equipment or tool they had borrowed from their neighbor. A pretty easy resolution to keep. Today we make resolutions like exercising more or losing weight or spending more time with family. Things that sound good but are pretty hard to keep. So what are your New Year's resolutions? Well, this morning a 12-year-old boy, a 7th grader, is going to teach us a New Year's resolution. Today in our Gospel lesson, Jesus speaks to us. And the lesson that he teaches us is probably one of the best New Year's resolutions that you could make for the year 2022. And so let's see what that is. Our Gospel lesson describes Mary and Joseph this morning as being a very devout family. Every year they went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. As a 12-year-old boy, Jesus went with them and there they spent the week as was the custom. And after the feast was over, Mary and Joseph began their trip back home to Nazareth. Now, Remember that back then, walking was the the main mode of transportation. And people would often walk in, in large groups because it was safer. And it would also help to make the time go by faster. And so Mary and Joseph most likely traveled with a large group of extended family members, friends, and fellow Jews from up north. In groups like this, the adults would often walk together and the children would also separate into their own group to play together and do other things as kids still do today. It was a three-day walk back to Nazareth. And so on the, the first night of the journey, Mary and Joseph set up camp and they looked for Jesus among the group. But they couldn't find him. He wasn't with the other children. He wasn't with their relatives or their friends. Jesus was missing. He was gone. Now, if you were a parent and you couldn't find your child, you would probably start to panic. And rightly so. There are all kinds of bad reasons why children go missing. And so Mary and Joseph were understandably upset and they set out to go back to Jerusalem. And there they spent three days looking for Jesus. Just imagine the questions that must have been going through their minds. Is he lost? Was he kidnapped? Is he hurt? Is he still alive? Well, finally, we are told they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And that everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. But Mary steps in and she rebukes Jesus. She said, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. 
And Jesus, the 12-year-old boy, doesn't respond by saying, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry about this. No, instead, he teaches his parents something that they didn't expect to learn that day. In verse 49, we are told, Jesus said, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Or to put it another way, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? But Mary and Joseph didn't understand what Jesus was saying to them. What did he mean by, I had to be about my father's business? Well, you see, even at the young age of 12, Jesus knew that he was not just the son of Mary. He was the son of God. Even at that young age, Jesus knew that his purpose in life wasn't simply to to play and be a good boy and grow up to be a young man. No, he knew that he had a greater purpose. He had a divine mission to be the Savior of all mankind. And a part of that mission was spending time in God's Word. Listening to the teachers, asking them questions, filling himself with the words and the promises of God which are found on the pages of Scripture. That was his father's business. And it was so important that Jesus came up missing from the group that he was traveling with back to Nazareth. Now ultimately, this 12-year-old boy would grow up to become one of the greatest teachers the, the Jews had ever heard as he continued to, to be about his father's business. But even more importantly, Jesus would someday be about his father's business by dying on a cross. That was his ultimate mission in life, to be the savior of all mankind. Yes, he was still a good son to his parents. The Bible tells us that Jesus returned home after that day and obeyed his father and mother. But he had a greater mission in life, a divine mission. To be about his father's business as the savior of the world. That was his number one priority. Well, do you know that you have a divine mission in your life as well? You are not just here to to work, to pay bills, to raise children, to socialize, to work more, to pay more bills, and so on. That is not really why God put you here on this planet. You have a greater purpose, a deeper purpose, and that is to be about your father's business. That is why you are here. And God's business can be summed up with those five words that you see on the screen just below the sermon theme. Hear, confess, receive, changes, and glorifies. Why are you here? Well, first and foremost, to hear the Word of God. God wants His Word to be a major part of your life. And as you hear the Word of God, God's business also includes you confessing your sins. God's business also means that you receive forgiveness from Christ for those sins. And as that happens, you also receive the Holy Spirit who changes you for the better. You grow into a person who glorifies God in the way that you live your life. That is God's business. To hear God's word. To confess your sins. To receive Christ's forgiveness. To change for the better and to glorify God. That is why God has put you here on this earth to be about your Father's business. So how did you do with that in 2021? Or were you like many people today who say, well, I'm too busy to spend regular time in God's Word. I have so many other things I need to do. Is God's business for you a priority or is it something that you do only when there is nothing else going on in your life? For Jesus, it was so important that he came up missing. Are you willing to come up missing because you are going about the business of your Heavenly Father? 
I was glad to see a number of you here on Christmas Eve, carving out time uh, from your busy schedules, taking time away from those family gatherings to be here in God's house. And that really is a, a difficult thing to do. You rearrange things so that you could hear the Word of God and worship Jesus on Christmas. And that is what happens when you go about your father's business. Sometimes you come up missing. The family gatherings may have to wait for a while because you need to spend time in God's word first. Was that you in 2021? What about sports? In 2021, were you willing to sacrifice sports or rearrange your schedule? Maybe even come up missing from your sporting event so that you could be about your father's business. Or in 2021, did you push the word of God to the side? Something had to give and so you sacrificed your father's business. When you do that, that really is idolatry. Was that you in 2021? Or what about work? What about all those projects you have to do at home? Were they first? Or did you make being about your father's business first? This morning I'd like to recommend a New Year's resolution for all of us. And that is to make the Word of God, to make our father's business our top priority in 2022. And it all starts with confessing our sins to our Heavenly Father. Let's look back on this past year, on 2021, and confess all those sins that we committed. Confess all the times that we let our Heavenly Father's business go by the wayside and instead pursue the things of this world. Confess and then receive forgiveness from Christ. You realize that all those sins have been forgiven by Jesus' death on the cross. His blood has washed those sins away. They are completely removed from God's eyes. Receive Christ's free forgiveness and then let the Holy Spirit change us for the better. As we receive Christ's forgiveness, the Holy Spirit will change us more and more into people who make God's word a priority in their lives. And then we will become people who glorify God with our lives. Yes, God's word, God's business in 2022. Let that be your top priority. It is possible to be a family man and also make the word of God a top priority in your life. Actually, you will be a better family man. It is possible to be involved in sports, to put in many hours at work to do all kinds of projects at home. It is possible to do all kinds of things and still make the Word of God a top priority in your life. But that does mean that at times you will have to sacrifice something or give up something. At times you may have to come up missing from something. Put God's business, God's Word first in 2022 and you will be blessed. Much more blessed than someone who throws it by the wayside to pursue the things of this world. Someone once said that a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who is not. God's Word, your Heavenly Father's business. That is where you find the Christ child who was born in a manger for the sole purpose of forgiving our sins. Here in God's Word, you see Jesus dying on the cross to save your souls. Here in God's Word, we see Jesus rising from the dead, promising us that gift of eternal life. Here in the Word of God, Christ blesses you. And He gives you joy and peace and the kind of love that only God could give you. That is God's business. Let that be your top priority in 2022, and you will be blessed. Amen. Please stand.
The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our gracious Father, as we stand on the threshold of this new year, we are painfully mindful of all of our stubborn and sinful natures, which have often led us to do the very things that you have forbidden, and to neglect the things that you have commanded us. Do not be angry with us on account of our sins, but for Jesus' sake freely pardon us. Father, we are also mindful of the blessings you have showered upon us in the past and also our need for your continual presence in the future. Years come and go, but you, our God, are ever the same. We are confident that from day to day and year to year, your tender kindness and compassionate love will rest upon us because you have adopted us as your children through Jesus. We thank and praise you for this and we desire to serve and obey you with our lives. Watch over us, ever guiding, guarding, and keeping us. Grant health to our bodies, and of your mercy may this new year be a time of healing for all who need it. O merciful God, we dare to make our requests known in Jesus' name because he is our Savior. Amen. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I encourage you to continue preparing your hearts and minds for receiving the Lord's Supper. Please stand. We continue with the liturgy for Holy Communion on page 33 in the front of the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. When the time had fully come, he sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, 
that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand. We join to sing, Thank the Lord.
Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. morning once again. We're glad that you could join us for worship this morning. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped with our service this morning. Also this week at uh, Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. we resume our Zoom Bible study as we continue to study uh, relationships in the book of Genesis. So uh, make plans to join us for that as you remain in God's word and as you are about your father's business this new year. And then, as I mentioned, um, if you didn't read it yet, please take time to read through the email you received from Tim Giebelhaus on behalf of the AOE regarding the COVID-19 protocols that we will be following. Uh, there's also a copy of it in the January newsletter. Um, again, just a reminder, uh, I see many of you are, are wearing masks this morning, and we, we thank you for doing that. Um, just a reminder, if you are not feeling well, even if you think it's something mild, as, as Dennis reminded me with his son this morning, just a, a sore throat could be COVID, um, especially if you've been vaccinated. Uh, it's what we will do out of love for our, our fellow believers and so that we can continue doing this, right? So Lord's blessings on your new year as we look to grow together in God's Word. 